Hi everyone, in the first part of this lecture we talked about multicollinearity and how to deal with multicollinearity. In this part of the lecture I will talk about model specification and when we talk about model specification we could be talking about one of two things. Uh, we could either be talking about the set of variables that we need to include in a given model or uh, we could be talking about the functional form that represent uh, such a relationship. Um, Given that we already talked about functional forms in, in a separate lecture, what we will focus on in this lecture is the, the choice of uh, variables. Uh, we could have one of two problems here. We could have an underfitted model or overfitted model. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to explain why we uh, may face such a problem. So with the case of underfitted model means that you uh, have omitted some relevant variables, some important variables that affect or that determine the behavior of the dependent variable. And for some reason, you did not include such variables. On the other side, the overfitted model means that you have included some uh, variables that are not important in, uh, in explaining such relationship. And in that case, you include irrelevant variables. So with the first case, uh, obviously, when you omit relevant variable, that could be because of you don't have enough uh, data or you don't have uh, enough information about the dependent variable and how it is determined. Um, for example, if you try to um, model the demand function and uh, you include the price of the product, but for uh, some reason or uh, for any reason you have uh, omitted the uh, income or the price of competing or substituting uh, goods. So in that way you will um, you will omit some important information and we'll see how this will affect our model. Of course when you omit those information we not when you uh, do not explicitly include all important variables in in your model the impact of these uh, variables will uh, be uh, included into the um the the error term and in that way you will uh, or this will lead to uh, what we call omitted variable uh, bias so let me show you an example here. So let's say this is the, the true parameter. What we have here is y, the dependent variable, depends on x2 and x3, and of course, some error term, ui. And um, that's the true model. But let's say for um, some reason you have omitted x3, uh, and uh, rather than estimating this model, you estimated this model which uh, in which you have y depends only on x2. In that case, the impact, the influence of x3 on y will be included into the R term and in that case we will have a new R term rather than having ui we have now uh, epsilon i and epsilon i equal ui the error we could have if we if we have the true model plus uh, beta 3 x uh, 3 so what is the problem so let me show you the problem here one of the main assumptions we have uh, when we when we uh, uh, studied the uh, classical linear regression model, we assumed that the expected value of the error term should be equal zero. So the error term on average should be zero. And of course, if the expected value of this error term ui equals zero, obviously the expected value of the new error term will not be zero. So that means the expected value of this equal, does not equal uh, zero. And what kind of implication this will have in our model? This means that the uh, estimators that we're going to have beta hat will not uh, be unbiased. It will be biased, which means we're not going to have the expected value of the uh, beta hat equal the true uh, parameter. Um, now, if we uh, omit or by excluding x3, so the risk we have here when we exclude x3 
uh, is that the coefficient that we're gonna have for x2 which is beta 2 will be uh, will be biased the standard error also biased and of course this will affect the confidence interval and will affect the hypothesis testing uh, which we cannot trust so that's the problem if you omitted a, an important variable so what about if you have included an irrelevant variable of course when you include uh, variables that are not important to the model that one reason that may explain uh, this problem is when you don't have a well-developed theory that explain the behavior of the dependent variable and for that reason uh, you've got different uh, variables you get a number of variables you didn't know which variable to include and for that reason you just included everything you've got data for and for and among those variables that you already included in the model there will be some irrelevant uh, variables so let's give an example here let's say this is our true model now y is the dependent variable depend on x2 and of course some error term ui so because again you don't uh, know or you don't have enough information about the uh, dependent variable and how it is determined you have included an extra variable x3 now we have a new r term this bi and this equal ui minus beta 3 x3 uh, so what's the problem here when you include any relevant variable properly it is less serious compared to the uh, um, the case where you omit uh, important variables um, it will not cause any uh, bias since the true coefficient of the relevant variable is zero because it is not relevant uh, the OLS estimators will also be consistent but the problem here when you include a relevant variable this will increase the variance of the standard uh, of the estimated coefficient and when you have uh, this problem this actually will decrease at the absolute value of the t ratios so what this means this means that you uh, will increase the probability or the likelihood of incorrectly excluding a relevant variable so because of that problem and ha and the way it affect the t ratios so you might look at your results and see that some of the uh, uh, some of the parameters or some of the, co the the coefficients are not significant and these coefficients might be important and and might be relevant to the model and because of uh, the problem because of what you've done because what you have included when you included uh, relevant variables to the model they affected the t ratio and that's why you see other variables properly which are important you see them uh, not significant and and therefore you could uh, because of that you could uh, drop those variables in the time that they are actually important to the model and of course this will uh, make us uh, face the other problem with the underfitting uh, underfitted uh, models so how to detect for such problem so let's go back to the omitted variables problem of course as we explained when you omit an important variable the impact of this variable goes to the error term then if you want to check if you want to test whether you have uh, uh, the omitted variable problem then you need to examine your residuals uh, of course we explained before you not you don't observe the error term you observe the residuals then that's why and we expect if you have a, a, a large sample if you have a, a sample that represent the population entire population then the residual should represent the error term uh, anyway so if you want to detect for uh, the omitted variables problem then you look at your uh, residuals and of course if there is any important variable that its impact now it is included in the residuals or in the error term there this impact or the behavior of the residuals will show you the impact of that uh, omitted variable what about the other story here or the other side of the problem if you include irrelevant variables well it's very uh, easy to look at the um, whether those variables are significant or not and if you remember we could apply one of the um, 
tests that we actually covered in lecture three, which is uh, the exclusion restriction test, which means that if you suspect or if you're not sure about uh, one of two or two variables, whether they are important to the model or not, then you can run if test and see whether uh, whether the, the, you can exclude those two variables from the model or not. And of course, we, we covered this before. And as an example, for example, if we have the uh, model we uh, in hand is Y, depend on X2, X3, and X4, and we want to check, we want to see whether uh, X3 and X4 are important to the model or not. So we can have an F test that tests these uh, two uh, parameters uh, jointly equal zero. So beta three equal beta four equal uh, equal zero. And we construct an F test and we can, uh, we can decide whether to drop or to keep those two variables. And we already discussed this, uh, this, uh, this before. So, but just as um, a, a good practice, if you are going to do that, then we would advise you to go from general to specific rather uh, than specific to general approach, which means if you have five, six variables and you actually uh, not sure about which variables, variables to include in the model, then start with the five or the uh, six variables you have, and then you start testing these one by one using a t-test or uh, probably two or three. You just try to do this with f-test. So if you if you test it, if you see this, whether they are significant or not individually, then you look at the t-test, the t-ratios, and then if you want to test uh, uh, more than one uh, to see whether they are important uh, to be included in the model or not, then you could use uh, f-test in the same way we, uh, we explained in lecture uh, three. So that's the idea of uh, uh, model specification. And to be more uh, specific, what we looked at today is the case when you have underfitted model or when you omit a relevant variable and the case when you have uh, included an irrelevant variable, which we called overfitted model. So that's very uh, quick overview um, on the model specification topic. And that was the last topic we should cover this, uh, this term. And um, in next lecture, we will do some uh, exam revision. Thank you for watching and see you next time.